to Jesus Christ. During this period of the celebration of the Nativity of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, there are many, many different and profitable subjects that we can turn our minds towards. So today let us briefly turn our minds toward the Magi, that is, the wise men who sought Christ, and let us look at the gifts which they brought to honor him. Now, in the East, the three wise men are liturgically commemorated on Christmas Day itself, and in the West, their visit is specifically commemorated on the Feast of the Epiphany. But universally, the Church now gives us this good opportunity for us to consider, even if briefly, the visit of these three wise men, the gifts that they made under the newborn king, as well as the example which they give to us which sustains us, even down to this very day. Now, the wise men, whom tradition tells us were three in number, or at least the principal wise men were three in number, came from the East, as it says, which variably is taken to mean from Babylon or greater Persia, Arabia, or even as far away as India. And they came to Jerusalem to worship the Christ, for they had seen a great sign, his star as they said, in the sky. Now, in recent times, various scientists and others have tried to identify this sign, either as a specific star or a supernova a comet or a conjunction of planets, and thus to date the time of Christ's birth. By tradition, however, we do not believe that the wise men found Christ by following any simple star, for we know that the scriptures tell us that the wise men found the Christ child because the star stopped directly over the house where he was. Now, natural stars are not such that they move and stop and stand over houses. The nature of the star of Christ is not specifically revealed, and so we should not seek to delve into speculation on the matter. Why? Because regardless of its nature, its end was fulfilled, and that end is that it led the wise men to Christ. Likewise, we should not spend much time or concern, or even worse, disdain, on considering the path which one has had to walk to come to the moment of conversion. Rather, let us rejoice when, like the wise men, we see that we are led under the Lord and Savior, the King of Kings. And the wise men here come to our Lord with gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And in these gifts we find a lesson as well. For gold represents the kingship of Christ, that kingship both divine and human. Like gold which never tarnishes, so the brilliance of our Lord's kingdom never falters, never wanes. And he truly is king, both divine and human. He is king both in the royal line of David, whose memory is celebrated, and by divine right as king of kings and lord of lords, for he is God himself. In frankincense, we find represented the priesthood of Christ and his Godhead, for incense is offered even to this day under the Lord Almighty for a sweet-smelling savor, offered as an image of the sacrifices and prayers rising before the very throne of God, as we hear recounted in the Apocalypse of St. John. 
their prayers activated, as it were, by the fervent souls, the hearts that burn within the faithful at the presence of God the Word. Our Lord, as the eternal high priest, enters into the Holy of Holies and offers the perfect sacrifice, which is himself. This leads us then to myrrh, in which we find represented the sacrifice of Christ, and ultimately his triumph over death. For myrrh was used both as an astringent and pain-killing agent, for we see that our Lord was offered wine mixed with myrrh at his crucifixion, it was also used as a preservative to be placed upon the body after one had died. And we see this in the bringing of aloes and myrrh to the anointing of the most sacred body of our Lord at his burial. In a word, the gift of myrrh, in this we see the divine victimhood of Christ, that he is the one who is offered in the sacrifice. So we have gold for the king, frankincense for the priest, and myrrh. For the victim. And this indeed is what the wise men continue to teach us to this day. And for ourselves today, we may ask ourselves what significance these gifts have in our relationship with Christ and his church. First, do we give gold to the church? Now, I don't necessarily mean literally gold, but I do mean support, whether it be financial support or moral support or even just giving of your time and your talents. But the fact is that the church does need all of these types of support in order to survive and thrive. And at this time of year especially, it might be good for us to look again at how we support the church in these respects. The wise men gave gold to Christ, which gold may well have paid for the flight into Egypt later. If we recognize the king, then let us ask how well do we give gold of our treasures, our times, and our talents to Christ the King? Secondly, frankincense. Do we give frankincense to the church in the sight of the members of the body of Christ? Now again, not necessarily literally frankincense, but do we offer respect, love of our neighbor, care of one another, and most importantly, prayer for one another? This is how we can spiritually offer incense unto Christ, even if we don't have a thurible. We do so in praying and lifting up all whom we may meet, in showing honor and respect, never hatred or derision. By our prayers we lift all up before the eternal throne of God, by genuine prayer, enlivened in a fervent heart which is alight with love and patience. And finally, do we give myrrh to the church? Again, not necessarily literally myrrh, but merciful love, compassion, sacrifice to the needs of the church, to the needs of our family, to all those whom we meet in our daily life, whoever they may be. Christ offers himself as the pure and spotless victim, and he calls us to unite our own sacrifices unto him, out of love for him, and precisely by love for him. And remember again that myrrh was used to alleviate pain, to have mercy on one who was suffering. The wise men gave the mercy of myrrh to Christ. How do we show mercy to those around us who are all made in the image of Christ? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. King, priest, and victim. And a call for us to give of our treasure, our prayer, and our mercy so that we may be made like unto him. And thus we have it. Let us, during this season of the Nativity, look at what we may give to Christ, what we may give to those in his church and to those in this world. The wise men gave us the example of giving. So now let us ask ourselves if we also are truly wise.